prayer and then get started. Heavenly Father, Lord, I pray that you would speak through my imperfect words this morning. Use us to encourage people, challenge people. Lord, I pray that as we open your word that we will, uh, that we will hear your voice. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, guys. Here we go. Philippians 1, <coughs> verses 20 to 26. Okay, we're going to read Philippians 1, verses 20 to 26. Continuing on from last week. Here we go. I eagerly expect and hope that I will in no way be ashamed, but will have sufficient courage. I want you to underline that phrase. You got a, hand, you got a, uh, a physical copy of your Bible. Un underline that phrase, sufficient courage. We're going to go back to that. But we'll have sufficient courage so that now, as always, Christ will be exalted in my body, whether by life or by death. For to me, to live is Christ and to die is gain. If I am to go on living in the body, this will mean fruitful labor for me. Yet what shall I choose? I do not know. I am torn between the two. I desire to depart and be with Christ, which is better by far. But it is more necessary for you that I remain in the body. Convinced of this, I know that I will remain and I will continue with all of you for your progress and joy in the faith. So that through my being with you again, your boasting in Christ Jesus will abound on account of me. This is the word of the Lord out of Philippians 1, uh, verses 20 to 26. So we have called this new Thursday morning devotional series Lessons in Lockdown because the Apostle Paul is writing this letter from house arrest, from prison. He is in lockdown, more so than even we are. He can't go to the hardware store. He can't go to the grocery store. He can't go for a walk or anything like that. He is totally locked down. And yet God in this moment through his Holy Spirit is inspiring him to write these words to the church in Philippi. And the church in Philippi has been experiencing not only sharp uh, suffering and oppression and poverty in a lot of different ways, but they're also having a hard time getting together. They're having a hard time getting along together. And so he is giving them some lessons that are going to help them grow spiritually during this time of difficulty. And here we get verses 20 to 26. And I had you underline that two word phrase right there, sufficient courage, right at the beginning of verse 20. I eagerly expect and hope that I will in no way be ashamed, but will have sufficient courage. Do you today feel like you have sufficient courage? Do you feel like you have sufficient courage? Uh, just do a little self-analysis right now as you're living in the times that we're living in and uh, experiencing life, <clears throat> excuse me, as you're experiencing life, do you feel like you have sufficient courage? Um, is your cup of courage full? Or is it kind of, kind of here? Is it kind of half full? Is it kind of low, if you're honest? Um, I'll be honest with you right now, my, my cup of courage is probably 25% full. Um, it's been a challenging week in a lot of ways and um, that sometimes we just, we just encounter these challenging times that kind of drain our cup of courage and it's no longer what scripture would define as sufficient, it's not sufficient courage. And so how do we get that back? Um, Paul eagerly expects and hopes that he will in no way be ashamed but will have sufficient courage so that is now, so that now as always, Christ will be exalted in my body, whether by life or by death. Um, all right. So if you if you're if you've got a notebook or something like that, or even the margin of your Bible right there, I want you to write one word. Okay. Here's the word I want you to write down: balance. Okay. Write down the word balance, and um, this is this is how we get as Christians we get sufficient courage back. Um, there's, there's, a, there's two sides here that the Apostle Paul is kind of, he's got tension between these two sides. He's kind of pulling back and forth between the two, and it's between life and death. And I think there is uh, a tendency that we have as, particularly as Christians, because we believe so, uh, so strongly in the afterlife, as we should, um, there is a tendency that we have to overfocus on one or the other one, to overfocus on life, meaning this life, this physical life, um, 
the, the, the experiences that we have before us, or we have a tendency to, at other times, I'm just saying that different people do this, I can knock this out in one day, over-focus on life or over-focus on uh, death. And not just death, meaning I'm, I'm thinking about the, the, the physical death that everybody endures in this life. I think about after life. And uh, of course, we've got all kinds of songs and things like that as Christians that we sing that, as we should, that, that celebrate our life that we will have after death, right? Um, we've got hymns like this. Um, if you can think of, <laughs> think of any hymns that kind of focus on this, um, you know, I'll Fly Away is one of them. I'll fly away, oh glory, you know, that, that kind of thing. Um, again, there, <laughs> that right there is, is very much focused on the, the afterlife. And, and so it, we, we just kind of tend to be out of balance with this a lot of the time. And the key for us as Christians is to live a life that is, has a balanced perspective on life and death. Let's look at this the way that the Apostle Paul explains it, uh, continuing on in verse 21. And here's the kind of the key verse. It's almost the key verse in the whole letter of Philippians, but uh, here it is. This is a good memory verse. For to me, to live is Christ and to die is gain. He's presenting these two options here. He's presenting these two options. He's got life with Christ in one hand, life in the presence of Christ in one hand. He's got life here on earth in the other one. Not to say that God's not present with us here in this life. He is in the form of the Holy Spirit, but not like we will be when we're with Christ. After death, we will be with Christ, physically with him, just as he is uh, physically uh, in, in heaven with, at, at the right hand of God. That's how we will experience it. And he's got these two things in mind all the time, but he's got them in mind in balance. And we'll see this here as we continue on. For to me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. If I am to go on living in the body, okay, if I'm to go on living in the body, this will mean fruitful labor for me. Yet what shall I choose? I do not know. I am torn between the two. I desire to depart and be with Christ, which is better by far, but it is more necessary for you that I remain in the body. Okay, here's the Apostle Paul's perspective on life, which is supplying him with sufficient courage. It's this balanced perspective that he is torn between the two desires that he has. Now, if we are honest, most of us at any point in time, if you kind of did a little, a little, uh, a little check on our soul or on our hearts, we would say that we are not imbalanced in this. We are not balanced in this perspective. I either am very much in the, in the category of I, I love this life. I, I want this life to continue on. And I'm very much focused on what God does in this life and how he blesses me now and how, uh, and, and how my, my family is healed now. And there are other times, and I know because I've talked with, uh, with many people who are like this, who are also on the other side, where they say, no, I, I, am, I am not concerned about this life at all. I am ready for the next life. I'm ready to fly away when we all get to heaven. Yes, um, I, I, I don't really have a desire to be here anymore. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go. And both perspectives are out of balance. And let me, let me explain to you how... An imbalanced perspective between life and death leads to uh, an empty courage cup, okay? And here's how it does this. So um, <clears throat> Christians who are out of balance and are over-focused on eternity, meaning over-focused on life after this life, it sounds strange to say that we can be over-focused on it, but we can. People who are in that camp, we tend to not be active enough in this life to really bother doing anything courageous for Christ now. We're just kind of biding our time. Uh, we're just passing through. Uh, we just kind of endure life as it comes. And we're not out there on the front, the front line, spiritually speaking, uh, taking the risk and, and uh, spreading the gospel and, uh, and serving people in this life, meeting their needs right here, right now, uh, as a way of showing God's love to them. We tend to not be doing that as much because we tend to just kind of be looking at our watches and waiting for the next uh, chapter of life to begin. Well, that 
doesn't it doesn't require any courage um, because you're not living a life where you're going out there for God and doing much of anything. That tends to be, I've been in that camp before uh, where I just kind of, I go to church, come back, do my life and I'm going to church and I'm just waiting for the day when God's going to call me up, waiting for the rapture, waiting for the, uh, the, the next chapter to begin. That's one way that we can be out of balance here. And the second way is an overfocus on this life. An overfocus on this life leaves me with an empty courage cup because I am only focused on things that are temporary and we know that they're temporary. And when we know that they're temporary, everything is, is, is shaky. Everything's shaky. You know that, that health is not guaranteed. It's shaky. Even though I get sick and then I get better, when I get better, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling good and I'm in a good mood. And we know that we struggle with this if uh, when, when things don't go our way in this life, we get hopeless, uh, we get severely depressed, we get significantly discouraged. Well, that leads to, an, oh, that's an over-focus on this life and I'm out of balance. And this is what the Apostle Paul says. I am torn between the two. What an interesting thing for him to say. He is not, he is not lessening the goodness of either thing, whether it's this life or life with Christ. He is not, um, he's not devaluing either one. He is not lessening either one. He is in fact elevating both of them to the highest possible place. And he's saying, listen, I desire to be with Christ. We should absolutely be looking forward to being with Christ. But we should feel torn about this. This is the thing that I think a lot of us are missing. We should feel torn about this. That we say, man, when we all get to heaven, you know, I'll fly away. We're only focused on that. We should be torn about this. That we so desire to be with Christ and yet so desire to be here and fulfilling what he has for us here in this life living out this life because this, this life matters. It matters greatly. What I do in this life matters very much to God and can glorify him. And so he says, I desire to be with Christ, which is better by far, but it is more necessary for you that I remain in the body. Convinced of this, verse 25, I know that I will remain and I will continue with all of you for your progress and joy in the faith so that through my being with you again, your boasting in Christ Jesus will be on account of me. So how do we strike a balance in perspective between life and death? Okay, there's two focuses that I think we need to have, okay? There's two focuses that I think we need to have. If we can, if we can bring this into our consciousness today, I think it will be very helpful to us. These are the two words I'm gonna be thinking of, all right? Here's two words for you, fruit and rest. Okay. Fruit and rest. How many of you all got the chance this past week to go outside and do some yard work? Uh, maybe raking up leaves or cutting back shrubs or, you know, uh, maybe mowing your lawn for the first time this year, uh, planting seed, doing something like that, planting a garden. You got the opportunity to go out there and do some work, which is awesome. Okay. It's really, really good to go out there and do the work. Uh, also, at some point in time, you have to stop doing the work. And you need to rest. There's this interesting balance and they're both good and they're both part of what God has given to us, right? Way at the beginning of Genesis, he gave us work and before the fall even happened, there was work and there was rest. God worked and his labor was fruitful. And then on the seventh day, he rested and they're both good. And they're both part of a Christian perspective. Even now, post fall, post sin, work and rest are very important. Particularly, I'm saying fruit and rest because what God wants us to be in this life is fruitful, abundantly fruitful. We see this in John chapter 15, where he says, I'm the vine and you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Just before that, he links fruitfulness with eternity when he says, I'm the true vine and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. While every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so that it'll be even more fruitful. He wants us to be fruitful in this life. That means that we are doing the work that God has set before us to do. I am loving the people that he has given me to love. 
I am preaching the gospel to the people he's given me to preach the gospel to. I am serving the people he's given me to serve. I am, I am participating in the church community that he has, he has blessed me to participate in. I'm doing these things and I am fruitful. And this is an important thing to focus on. It doesn't matter what age you are. It doesn't matter uh, if, you're, if you're in the middle of your career, at the beginning of your career, if you're retired, if you're a teenager, it doesn't matter. He wants you to be fruitful. If you are still alive today, he has work for you to do in the yard, in the garden. He wants you to be fruitful. And yet at the same time, we can't just have this focused perspective on only this life and only the work that we're doing here because what gives us the, the perfect balance that allows us to have sufficient courage in this life is that I'm also looking at eternity. I'm also focused on the rest that is coming because it will be rest. Hebrews chapter four describes life with Christ as tremendous rest. And so I have these two perspectives. I have fruit that I long to see in my life. I long to see fruitfulness every single day. I'm asking God, okay, how can I be fruitful, Lord, for you today? And yet at the same time, right into my perspective on a daily basis, I'm, I'm focused on the rest that is coming because eventually the work in this life will be done and he has rest for me to enjoy. It's both. Sometimes I can get so tired in this life that I'm only focused on the rest that's coming. Sometimes I can get uh, so wrapped up in, in, in how well life is going here that I, I, I totally neglect to keep eternity in perspective and we get so out of balance and this is how we end up with, I think, empty courage cups for this life. Sufficient courage come from a balanced perspective on life and death. When I have a balanced perspective, I don't have to I don't have to fear things. I can just fear God. I don't have to fear this life not working out because I know that there is an eternal life that I'm actually in this for. But I also, I also can have sufficient courage to do great and courageous things in this life because I know that it matters, that it matters to God that I'm fruitful today. I'm not just passing through. I'm not just biding my time. I'm here for a reason and this life matters and God wants me to be as fruitful as I can possibly be. So I'm going to give you two phrases here as we close out, two phrases in prayer that you can use today that will help garner for you, I believe, this perspective on fruit and rest, fruit and rest, life and afterlife, okay, both. And it's two phrases. Here it is. Here's phrase number one. I will do it. I will do it. Okay, so this is asking God, okay, what can I be fruitful in today? How can I be fruitful? Uh, how can I be a fruitful um, branch on your vine today, Lord? How can I be a fruitful branch on your vine and just say to him, I will do it. I will do it. Whatever it is that you are calling me to today, okay, maybe it's reaching out to a friend. God wants to use you. The fruit is he wants to use you to encourage a friend today. Okay. I will do it. I will reach out. I will encourage. I will pray for. I will do the things I need to do. Maybe he's calling you to do an act of kindness or act of love for somebody to encourage them. Uh, I will do it. I will make the phone call, Lord. I will do it. I will do the work today. And then here's the second phrase I want to give to you, okay? We, we talked this past Sunday in our message about envisioning the promises of God, okay? So eternity, which is a a new earth, uh, a, a restored physical body in resurrection, that kind of thing. In prayer today, at some point in time, use this phrase, I can see it. I tell God, I can see it. Imagine your resurrection life. Imagine the rest that is coming. Imagine the time where you will no longer have phone calls from the doctor. Imagine the time where you will no longer have um, strife between people in your family. Imagine the time where you will no longer wake up with that pain that isn't going away. Imagine that time, bring it into the front of your mind for a few moments, envision it and tell God, I can see it. And use those two phrases. I'm gonna use them today, okay? Lord, what do you have for me to do here? I will do it. What you have for me in the future, I can see it, okay? What you have for me to do today, I will do it. What you have for me tomorrow, I can see it. Say it again. What you have for me to do today, I will do it. What you have for me tomorrow, I can see it. 
and looking this way is going to help build this balanced perspective for you between life and death, just as the Apostle Paul had. And slowly but surely, you will be able to express this same sentiment that he did when he said, which shall I choose? Okay, for to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. If I'm to go on living in the body, this will mean fruitful labor for me. Yet which shall I choose? I do not know. I am torn between the two. I want to be with Christ, but I want to be fruitful. I want to rest, but I want to do the work. I want to be fruitful for him, but I also want to be with him and maintain that that tension, be torn between the two. And that is the perspective that the Lord wants us to walk with every single day. And we will have sufficient courage to do whatever is necessary in this life, sufficient courage to face down difficulty, sufficient courage to do his work and spread the gospel, sufficient courage to face down even the worst that comes in this life. Because we know, Lord, what do you have for me today? I will do it. What you have for me tomorrow, I can see it. What you have for me today, I will do it. What you have for me tomorrow, I can see it. Because for me, to live is Christ and to die is gain. And I am torn between the two. That is a perspective that results in sufficient courage. That's my prayer for you guys today. Let me pray as we close out. Heavenly Father, I pray, Lord, everybody listening here today will be filled with sufficient courage through maintaining this balanced perspective, Lord. Make us people who are torn between the two. We want to be with you. We desperately want to be with you. We want this life to be done so that we can be with you. Yet we also don't want this life to be done because the more that we live here and work here for you, the more fruit there is for you, Lord. The more sacrifice there is for you, the more ways that we can love you. Help us maintain this incredibly balanced perspective, Lord, because this life matters and the next life matters. Both of them do make us people who are torn so that we can be just filled with courage and working for you here, Lord. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Guys, thank you so much. Uh, Remember those two phrases today, whatever you have for me to do, Lord, I will do it. What you have for me tomorrow, I can see it. I pray that that is uh, encouraging to you, challenging to you today. Uh, Share this video, get it out there so that people can see it. Guys, I love you, miss you. We'll see you soon. Have a good one.